There are several problem-solving frameworks for educators and students to draw on. One of my favorites is the process of human-centered design thinking that has, has come out of the Stanford D School. For this assignment, I took a look at how I might prepare powerful questions as a way to be more intentional about helping students develop a mathematical mindset and to draw attention to some key mathematical practices while using design thinking as a guide. The first two stages of design thinking has us really consider who we are designing for and to more clearly define the problem from that person's point of view. The empathy and define stage of design thinking really help us make sense of the mathematics that will come up in the activity. A powerful question is inherent in this is, can we create a how might we statement that define the problem we're trying to solve and for who? Here is the results that the kids came up with at, during the second stage, the defined stage of this activity. During the next stage, the ideate stage, I think it's really important to ask questions that will stop students from coming up with a precise solution and to force them into the more rough draft type of thinking and to focus on wild brainstorming. Asking questions like what else and how could you build this build on this idea are really helpful at this point. The right questions during this phase can have students really expand their thinking. Let's take a look. Should I share all three of my ideas? Go for it. Um, my first one was having the tube a little bit away from the fan. So like there's, like you could put it in underneath and make it sure it flies straight up. And then my second idea was making sure we had the support of the tube and fan so that it stands up and doesn't just fall down or tip over sideways. And then my third idea was maybe we could turn it sideways. So instead of putting stuff up, we could turn it sideways and shoot stuff sideways. In this example, I might ask the young man, how far away do you think it would need to be for your idea to work? Why? What I did is, um, there, like, there was, like, the wind tunnel up, and then there was, like, supports going parallel next to each other. And then we put, and then we put the tube, and then we connect the tube to the parallel lock, or the, the things that are holding, or the sticks that are holding it. And then the fan will go under, and then we can put the thing that we want to fly up under, on, like, or above the fan, and then we just shoot up. A question that I might ask here might be, what do you mean by parallel? And tell me more about why you want the supports to be parallel. As we get ready to enter the prototyping phase of design thinking, I might ask students, what do you think the first step is in making your idea a reality? Here's a couple examples of students doing that. Um, a fan, the, a fan, fan more, blocks, more blocks, and the tube. And, the, and yeah. the tube. What do you need to make the tube? We're working on the tube first. Um, we just need yeah, the tube. Tape, That's it. Yeah. Um, awesome, probably. Hmm? Yeah. Tape and plastic. Flash. I might ask the young lady, why did you decide to create a paper model first? How might creating a model help you succeed? Or I may ask, how did you approach creating a model?
in this um, phase doing the prototyping, we really get a chance to look at the mathematical practice using appropriate tools strategically to make sense of mathematics. Let's take a look. Another piece. Is that what you said? Over there. And here. I might ask questions like, what type of tools do we need to be able to cut the right amount of material without too much waste? What measurements do we need and why? How did you get those measurements? One powerful question I thought here was, which features of your solution required you to become more precise as you move from the ideate phase to the prototype phase? Or maybe during what phase of design thinking was rough draft thinking most helpful? When was it least helpful? Now let's take a look at the testing phase of design thinking as the students test and revise their solutions. So questions like, why did the feather work well? Or what worked about this? What did you expect to happen? What surprised you about your model? How might you improve your model? That door is getting bigger. Here I might ask, what types of questions might we be able to investigate with our wind tunnel prototypes? Are any of these math questions? As I reflected on this activity by going through pictures and videos, it became clearer to me that the pre-planning phase should include creating some powerful questions that could increase the opportunities for students to put mathematical practices to use during the design thinking process. The mathematical practices that I saw come out were number one, three, four, five, and six.